CJ DJ. He's talking again. Since this motherfucker keeps yapping. Since some, right. some shots your boy's way. Are you? Yeah. No way. Already. I literally, I literally just commented on it during the commercial break. Had to keep the rivalry going. It's good for business. <laughs> Couple highlights from that game I made, but you glad you found one I screw up. I'll get 1% better. <laughs> damn. Shut up, bro. God damn. You're lucky you didn't see your video. You ethered him. I ethered him for sure. That's all he does is yap and rap. Like, yap and rap, brother. That's I mean, god damn. Get over it. Listen, congrats on the bag. You already won me over. Yeah, you already, you already won Spinny over. Yeah. He's breaking up with you now. I mean, I, listen, the, the crazy part about it, too, and this actually kind of ties into the Jared Goff stuff, because my initial reaction to him having the comments about having to start, he's a veteran, all the good stuff like that, the, the way they came out was kind of derogatory to the work that Afonso Milfano put in. But my words that he quoted on Twitter to, to start this beef was that I have no concern that he's going to return to form and ball out. I just don't like that he kind of like undermined his teammate in the, in the work that he put in. That was me like, I feel like a little bit of a compliment. Yeah. I say he's going to ball out. He's sensitive. He is sensitive. Motherfuckers acting all sensitive and shit. But the way I took it, I made it a meme. It didn't blow up. I wish it did. I put his face on the Jordan. I took that personally. Yeah. This kind of ties into another topic, and I'm only bringing this up because it does tie into it. The Jared Goff stuff, if you have it. Yeah. He's a little bit sensitive, too. He's acting all sensitive and shit. Nigga acting all sensitive yeah. and shit. Oh, ain't no hell. word. I have this, like, I probably need to drop it pretty soon here because I'm going to hopefully be in Detroit for a long time. But I have this thing with our local media where, like, they, they almost, like, relish in, in negativity at times. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's what gets clicks and that's what sells. But it, it's, it's, it's no longer what they need to live in. Like, right. hey, guys, like, we, we have a good team. We've had success. Like, we can be happy about that. We can celebrate that and not have to write about how, like, we're constantly the underdog. Like, no, like, teams are going to be gunning them for us now. Like, we're, we won the division and all that. And, I, and I'm probably overthinking it in my head just because it's the chip on my shoulder and the um, – Competitive. The competitor in me, but um, in that moment, I was just giving that guy a hard time. I actually really like him, but I, mean, uh, I think that's great. Yeah, he's not talking about us because we don't write. We don't write. You know, motherfuckers can't write. But okay, we don't write. <laughs> the last article I wrote was about DeAndre Ayton and why he's a bum. And before I that, the last article I wrote was when I was a part of the state news. So I'm not right. I didn't. I only wrote one article for Wilbur. And I feel like we're pretty positive about the line. Actually, my article did blow up, and it was kind of anti golf. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. But I feel like <laughs> this motherfucker writes. <laughs> but I, I think we're pretty positive about the Lions. We've been saying it the past couple. I've been talking to you guys in the chat about it, how we have expectations now. Because, like I said, he kind of took the words out of my mouth. No diddy about how it's not like <laughs> the cute story is not a thing anymore. Like the, the uh, rah-rah underdogs are not a thing anymore. We got a dog-ass team. We are a favorite for the Super Bowl. We are a favorite for the NFC. There are expectations now, and I'm, I'm with him on that. I agree with him. Stop talking about negative shit. We got a great team. Talk about why they're so great. So I, I got to be honest with you guys. I don't know that anything has been negative post-2021. Everyone has probably been, talking about Carlos, bitch ass. Yeah, Carlos could, would be the only one I could think that has, has spoken negatively. And this is why I kind of tied to the CJ DJ stuff, because although I complimented him and he turned it into beef or whatever it was, JG, he said it right there, the same thing. Maybe it's just me being a competitor and putting that chip on my shoulder. And I, listen, I, I want to be that. If, 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 it's, if me talking shit makes you play better, I'm all for it. All right. I, I really, and then by the way, I don't think that we're talking shit. We're observing, like, they're, they're like real time observations of what's going on. When he plays well, I never said he wasn't playing well. When he played bad, I never said he was playing well. It was yeah. just, it's not necessarily negativity, but I. I can appreciate that and understand that from an athlete standpoint where you, you take that yeah. and you do let it motivate you. That's what you got to do, man. You got to take that noise from the outside. And here you go, Goff. All you guys, clip this, no context, not me praising him and not me praising this team and thinking they're going to be good and saying this simply for the reverse psychology aspect of it. Clip this, no context, and send it to Goff. Jared Goff, you suck as a quarterback. You'll never win a Super Bowl. You'll never be the, the quarterback that Detroit needs. You can't get it done in the big situations. It's been proven. You'll never win a Super Bowl for Detroit. So get that out of your mind. What's this couple? I'm just saying, he needs the motivation. So no context, clip that and send it to him. Yeah, hold on. I got one too. 
you're fucking ugly. <laughs> No, but I, uh, that's the thing too, is like a lot of people, he's talking to you easy, talking to you easy, talking to you easy. Again, I've never, I just told you guys to chill when you were talking about MVPs. And lo and behold, brother didn't get a single MVP vote. I'm just, that's, that's all I've come from is like the reality. Like, I haven't seen Terrell in NFL in a while. Haven't seen Terrell in NFL in a while. Yeah, that's correct. That's facts. Where's my jersey? Come for that jersey. I but, me over. Regardless, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, you got me going ADD, singing <laughs> Terrell in NFL. Thanks a lot, man. I'm sorry. Piece of shit. No, but I, I don't know. I guess I just appreciate that he's using it as motivation. I, I think as much as people want to take the non-praise I have to say about Jared Goff or just doses of reality I have to say about Jared Goff and if the timing comes off as a little haterish, sure, I guess I could agree to that. Yeah. I'm really not a hater, though. I hate his fans because you guys are the, the g -g 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 like crazy. The it's, it's wild. But of him, I'm, well, I'm appreciative of him as a man. I mean, listening to that podcast in the way in today, I didn't get to finish it. But just like you got to think like, he was staying here to die. He recognized that. He said it through his own words. Those are, those are statements that we've made about the situation. He said his own stuff. I was sent to die, yeah. essentially. Yeah. He had to make sure, like, save it a little bit because he didn't want to disrespect, you know, that, that dope-ass green sign out there. But uh, <laughs> No, he was sent here to die. He was, but ca he was cast away. He was written he, off. He made the most of it. He didn't allow himself to die. He, he fought right back. got better. He said, I think the book he read, it was like, sometimes the obstacle is the best way. And, and yeah, mm -hmm. it makes you better going through shit. It like, really does. Like Gun Guy says, yeah, take your pants off. Sometimes you got to take your pants off and put your meat on the table. And that's what Jared Goff has done for the past two seasons. Because, yeah, we were extremely critical of Jared Goff. We were very, very critical of Jared Goff. And he shut me up. I was on this not this network. After games, I said, that's my quarterback. That's the best quarterback I've seen in the Lions uniform. And it's true. He's mm -hmm. done the most. He's gone out there and he's won playoff games. He won a division. He did the things that I said he couldn't do. Now do the last thing I said you can't do and go win a Super Bowl. I, lo I love you, Jared Goff. Go win a Super Bowl. Uh, Detroit Dabber, I've literally never said that it was supposed to be trash talk the whole time. Why are you doing this? Why do you do this, Dabber? Come on, Evan. You're better than this. You said you were motivating CJ, did GJ, you too. Did government? Huh? Yeah, I did. Damn. What up? Evan, come on. <laughs> That's crazy. Or Ethan, one of those. <laughs> Let me talk to you. <laughs> so you said you were motivating CJ, GJ, too. LMAO, untie, until he, untie he left, and then all of a sudden it was supposed to be trash talk. No, I'm still saying his motivation, just as I just said about Jared Goff, too. I, I, you talking shit motivates me. Like, like I, I, I was driven by that. I, there used to be a, a, a sports group that I was a part of on Facebook from forever. Like, when, back when Facebook was a thing, into quarantine, when I started, like, doing podcasting and, and making content and whatnot, and I used to post my shit, because why would you not promote your shit? And some guy, I remember it specifically, I have it probably in my phone still, some guy commented, don't give a fuck about your stupid podcast. And then when I started getting, you know, Darius Slay on, Kendra Lust on, I made sure to go mm. back to that same group and tag him every single time I had a Glover Quinn or Darius Slay on the show, and I, you know, signed the contract. Woodward posted a picture, tagged my man. No one gives a fuck about your stupid podcast. Where you at now, bitch? Yeah, bitch. Dumb ass bitch. Bitch. Stupid ass bitch. Ugly ass bitch. I remember your name, bitch. I think it was Ryan or something like that. Yeah, I'll find you it. remember. But it motivates you though. Yeah, Dad. You see me? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember we did that to uh, yeah. oh and another God. thing, Dude, Grandma. <laughs> yeah, another thing, yeah. Grandma. Yeah, to yeah, Dad. You said I'd never be nothing, but look at me now. Uh, my dad's been very supportive of me yeah. my whole life. <laughs> Shout out Tigers Will. What are you about to say, Shout Nick? out Tigers Will. Yeah, I mean, if Jared Goff wants to use this as like a Michael Jordan motivational type thing, I'm all in for it, no doubt. And this city owes Jared Goff a lot. You know, we chanted his name at those games. Too much. And we booed our old quarterback that literally was the face of the franchise. You know, and... Jared Goff, if you want to use this motivation, be like, go right ahead. But there are criticisms, criticisms to be had of Jared Goff outside in cold games last year at Baltimore, at Chicago. One touchdown, three interceptions, lost both of those games. We respond to that the next day. Like, you will have things to say about your quarterback that aren't always the nicest things. <laughs> you know, you're going to call him out sometimes if he has a bad game. You're allowed to do that. You're allowed to be critical. If Jared Goff picks apart every single thing somebody says about him, I mean, I think he has to be a little bit more strong-minded than that, honestly. Yeah. But again, though, no, you don't no, have to doesn't. be. Let him motivate you. Yeah. you I'm saying? saying I hope it does. Like, yeah, 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 Jordan, yeah. bring us to the bowl, baby, you know? And he's not, he's a pretty strong-willed, like, strong-minded guy. Like, when we yeah. see him take those shots, it's kind of out of character. Like he did with Ryan Fitzpatrick, where he said, I, I didn't it. know I was a poor man's anything. Yeah. Like he said with Bob Wojanowski, called him out when he was like, 
when Woj was talking about the Lions guys and how they're good and then they're not stars, and he's like, ah, never mind. <laughs> yeah, like, that's what he was talking about the context of the video. Yeah, I, I love seeing that shit, dude. I love Jared Goff doing that. It's It shows that he's taking that shit personally, as he should. He is a competitor. He is our quarterback. You should take that shit personally. If they don't think you're good enough, I didn't think you're good enough. You went out there, you proved me wrong. Now do it again and go win a Super Bowl, brother. Like, exactly. you want to be embraced by this city? It doesn't matter what you look like, where you come from, if you got bodyguards in Birmingham, if you win football games, this city will love you. It does not, nothing else matters. You could be ugly as shit, you could be, which he's a handsome guy, obviously Jared Goss not ugly as shit, but I'm just saying, you could be anything. If you win football games, this city will love you. Jared Goff won a shit ton of football games last year, and the city loved him. So, that's all it comes down to. Two, I don't care two. about who you are, what you think, what you believe. Go out there and win me some football games, and I'm with you. Two of the greatest athletes of all time. Two of the, the greatest competitors of all time. Tom Brady, Michael Jordan. Yeah. Michael Jordan. It, it was literally became a meme up. because every single thing, I took it personally. It was the, the smallest shit. Motherfucker could sneeze and say, I bless you, but it wasn't loud enough. I took that personally. That, how's the MJ, that's how the MJ doc came off. And then, lo and behold, just last year, Tom Brady and whatever podcast, the man of the arena, whatever it is, came out and said, yeah, I would have to come out and I had to make shit up, give myself <laughs> reasons to be pissed off yeah. playing the game of football. Those are two of the greatest competitors of all time. So I'll continue to talk my shit, which, again, I don't really perceive it as shit talking. I perceive it as observations of what actually took place in the field. I don't fancy the shit talking. And I know that Jared Goff, as an athlete, as a competitor, will take that shit talk, but he uses it as fuel. You, I, and I love that. I, I hope he keeps that. I have nothing against that, and I love that he came out and said that. Yeah, me too. And I, I, I hope to see more of that. Actually, I hope to see less of it because I hope no, he gives nobody a reason to question him because he goes out there and he wins a Super Bowl. Exactly. That's what separates him from J. Cole. He exactly. Has a competitive oh, he, stood, he stood on business. <laughs> oh, Jared Lord. Goff stands on business. J. Cole does not. That is known facts of the universe. J. Cole does not stand on business, and everything he raps are caps other than not making varsity.